you have to think about every the smallest touch point as being maybe the biggest motivator or detractor for your business. So we have to think in a different way, and we have to understand that we're like paramecium under a, a microscope, right? Everything we do, and you know, and, and we've seen dozens of examples of companies that have had a mishap and it goes viral. Right. Marketing a product that's that's B to C versus an entity that's B to B. What 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 framework would you would you say that has to be followed in each category? Well, it's so interesting because people assume that B to B means you just should be channeling, you know, those vertical magazines, right. you know, right, Business Week and right. Fortune and Forbes and yeah. and. I'll tell you something that you probably didn't realize, but Aflac advertising was B2B. It wasn't B2C. It wasn't to consumers. Right, because we're talking to the C-suite uh, executives to get it through the company, correct? Well, or, okay. no. Or, okay, partly, so. here's what the issue was. Uh, you cannot buy Aflac yourself. You can it only be purchased if your company offers it. So why were we advertising on TV? Because they wanted to grow their sales force. Okay. And suddenly they had, a, first of all, they had people coming and in, going into, we used to say ask about it at work, going into work, mm -hmm. going, do you carry Aflac, something they never heard about before. Right. We created, Eric and Tom created these little furry ducks. Okay. Which were used every time somebody would buy them, it would go, the proceeds would go to help their cancer, ho cancer okay. hospital in okay. Atlanta. They okay. raised millions of dollars. And we had the feeling that you may be a business person, but you're still watching TV. Okay. So here it was, it was B2B because we wanted people who were in their sales force, and Affleck used to say, our sales grow as our sales force grow. And they're competing with all the other you know, uh, agencies, uh, insurance agencies, and they needed a bigger sales force. And that's what happened. When they looked at the advertising, they're going, wow, I think... I think this is going to be an easier thing to sell into a company. Fascinating. So you, you used B to C mediums. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. For a B to B. Yeah, not all the time, uh, but a lot of the time. Okay. And then let's focus on the, you know, the Dawn and et cetera, B to C products, products that you can get on the shelf. What are some tips you could share in that space? Well, we, we have something called, I think I mentioned before, the War Room, where you have on your uh, walls all the tweets and all the blogs that are going on that have to do with your consumer, not mm -hmm. necessarily your product, right? Uh, we were selling uh, ZQuil, which is sort of the nighttime version of okay. DayQuil, right? Right, NyQuil, DayQuil. NyQuil, like whatever that, that mm -hmm. was, yeah. I hope I got the name right. Okay. And so they started, the team that was working on it started looking at uh, what are people talking about at 2 o'clock in the morning? So they realized we have to really reach insomniac, so we should be doing advertising <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning, right. which is what we started, we started to do. And also the media buys much cheaper, right? right? But right. who better the to talk to, shift. who can't go to sleep? Is, right. you know. So being, it, it's much more about the conversation with the consumer. And if you have a bad interaction, uh, you know, the most important person on you know, Virgin Airways is not Richard Branson. He said the most important person is that flight attendant who's either going to help you or not help you with your luggage. That's true. And so we really believe in that, that touch person is the most important thing. Uh, we were dealing with one of our fast food accounts. Uh, somebody wrote in that they had a bad experience with some of the food product, mm. and what they got back was, you know, in an email, called this 1-800 number. And I said, this is a company we're pitching. I right. said, imagine if that friend had, that person had 10 million friends on Facebook, which is not right. crazy. No. Nope. The way things nope. spread. That's I right. said, you'd be out of business. You have to think about every, the smallest touch point as being maybe the biggest motivator or detractor for your business. So we have to think in a different way. And we have to understand that we're like paramecium under a, a microscope, right? Everything we do. And, you know, and, and we've seen dozens of examples of companies that have had a mishap and it goes viral right. and that's right. the end of it. So, in fact, you know, from, from your uh, vantage point and, and, and a lifetime of experience, um, damage control campaigns, any tips on that? Yeah, I think be honest. I mean, okay. one interesting in, 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 in the uh, uh, political debates the other right. day is Pete, Mayor Pete, when he was asked a question about the, you know, the black, you know, the black situation, uh, and he said, you know, I couldn't get it done. And he raised 
24 million dollars. Wow. Because he was week. forthright, yeah. honest, yeah. candid. And didn't try to like didn't try finagle his way around it. it around. And he said, I just wasn't good enough for this one, but I'm going to try harder. And so we need to be incredibly, incredibly important uh, and, and listeners and be very honest. I think that um, one of the difficult things, they always say the, the worst thing next to a bad ad is a bad product that you're advertising in a good way. If you're advertising something that really stinks right no they will they will they will eat that fry or whatever or buy that that whatever right. that is that right. widget and then they'll never buy it again right right and then and and they'll blame the agency <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> not always but a lot of the time <laughs> i love the honor of interviewing c-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.